than prophets sin. As far as the, the uh, masala or the issue of prophets sinning, then the people of knowledge are united uh, upon the fact that the prophets do not commit major sins. That the prophets do not commit major sins. But there is a difference of opinion among the people of knowledge concerning whether or not the prophets commit minor sins. Uh, and that which has been attributed to the messenger alayhi salatu salam from sin, then they differ concerning whether or not the prophet alayhi salam actually sinned or are they mistakes. Um, from those who say that the prophet alayhi did commit sins, but they were minor sins, <clears throat> They use as an evidence the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the beginnings of Surah Al-Fatih. Inna fatahna laka fatihan mubina liyaghfira laka Allahu ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma taakhar wa yutimma ni'matahu alayk wa yahdiyaka siratan mustaqeema wa yansuraka Allah nasran azizakum. Salaam wa rahmatullah. That Allah Azza wa Jal mentions that indeed we have given you the great victory. Liyaghfira laka Allah that Allah Azza wa Jal may forgive ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma ta'akhar that which has passed from your sin and that which is to come wa yutimma ni'matahu alayk and complete his virtue upon you similarly the statement of some of the companions what, what then of you O messenger of Allah who Allah Azza wa Jal has forgiven his previous sins and his future sins and so they say the mention of sin here indicates then that it is possible for us to say that the Prophet ﷺ committed sins, but they were not major sins, rather they were minor sins. Uh, another group of the people of knowledge they hold that the Prophet ﷺ did not commit sins, but that the Prophet ﷺ made mistakes. And that those mistakes were mis mis mistakes of judgment. And that, he, that is that he took a lesser position in relation to an affair of ishtihad. Yeah, and an issue came before him. He strove to make ishtihad in relation to the issue. To strive to come to what was correct. And he took a position that was uh, inferior to a position that could have been or that was superior. Like the statement of Allah Azawajal Abasa wa Tawalla and Ja'ahul A'ma al Ayah. When the Prophet Sallam frowned and turned away when the blind man came to him. When the blind man came to him, a reference to uh, Ibn Umm Maktoum, who came to embrace what the Prophet Sallam was given da'wah to the notables of Quraysh. And so when Ibn Umm Maktoum came to embrace, the Prophet ﷺ was concerned because he had the ears now of the notables of Quraysh. And so he turned away from Ibn Umm Maktoum and continued giving da'wah to the notables. And so Allah Azza wa Jal revealed, Abasa wa tawalla an ja'ahu al-a'ma wa ma yudrika la'allahu ya zakka. So here Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned and revealed that he frowned and turned away, that the blind man came to him, and what would let him know? That perhaps he would purify himself. Or that he would be reminded, and the reminder would benefit him. And then Allah Azza wa Jal went on to dispraise those who the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was giving da'wah to. And he dispraised them because of their arrogance. And so, in relation to this incident, here the Prophet ﷺ was, was disciplined by Allah. ﷺ. But his, the discipline occurred around something that was a position that the Prophet ﷺ took, an issue of ijtihad that was of, يعني, it was a lesser judgment. Naturally, the Prophet ﷺ would not have known and couldn't have known that. Uh, these individuals were not going to be guided uh, and that Ibn Umm Maktoum may possibly have turned away, Mathala. The Prophet ﷺ, of course, his thinking was, let me finish with these and then I'll come to him, the one that wants to embrace, when actually Allah Azza wa disciplined him and showed him 
that the better thing to do would have been to turn to him, to give him the guidance, and then concern yourself with them. But, yeah, I mean, you don't know. These are individuals who feel themselves self-sufficient. And Allah referred to them as such. As far as the one who is istaghna, yeah, and he believes himself self-sufficient, doesn't need anything. So if this is his attitude, then what is he going to deal with or do with your da'wah? And he believes himself self-sufficient, doesn't, he's not in need of anything. So he doesn't need you. While here an individual was blind, he's come for guidance. And so if you look at the affair, and it was, it was a, a, an issue of ishtihad that the Prophet ﷺ made, and he made a judgment that could have been better. And so Allah Azza wa Jal rectified that misjudgment of his. Uh, and so the instances where Allah Azza wa Jal disciplined the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or corrected the Messenger of Allah Alayhi Salatu Wasallam that it is not possible to say that they were sins per se but they were judgments that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made mistakes in those judgments uh, and so the issue then and what is uh, of the better of the positions is that those judgments, they may possibly be referred to as mistakes or even linguistically as sins. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, when he mentioned that indeed he has forgiven that which has passed from sin and that which is to come, that encompasses any type of error, error in judgment, any type of error that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi may have made, Allah Azza wa Jal has over, overlooked that and thus he will be meeting Allah Azza wa Jal with a clean slate. And so the issue then uh, in relation to do the prophets sin? Naam, some of the people of knowledge, they hold that the prophets, number one, after uniting upon the fact that they do not commit major sins, uh, some of the people of knowledge hold that it is possible for some of the prophets to, co to commit minor sins. But uh, as far as that which is related to the messenger of Allah, وسلم, then the position of those who hold that he made Lesser judgments, judgments that could have been better, mistakes in judgment, and that is established in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. Wallahu ta'ala a'lam, wa sallallahu sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa akhir da'wana, anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.